let us now make our player move. So here in our player prefabs folder, I'm going to drag player two, and I'm going to set his order in layer to be two. And we need to hit apply so that this applies to the prefab that we have here, because we made a change to this game object that's in the hierarchy panel. And each change that we make, we need to hit apply so that that applies to his prefab right here. And for the player two, we can simply alter the prefab itself set the order in layer at two and we don't need to hit apply that will be automatically applied on him so now what we need to do is we need to go in our assets and create a folder and name it scripts inside of it just to stay organized create player scripts folder and inside of it create a c sharp script so right click c sharp script and name it player and i'm going to drag it on our player one and now we also need to hit apply so that because we add the component, we need to hit apply so that that change applies to his prefab. And double click this script and monodevelop will open it. Now, in order to move the player, we need a couple of variables. So we need a public float move force, which is going to be equal to, let's say five. And I set it to be public on purpose so that we can alter it in the inspector panel if we see the need for it. Now I can copy this here and create here also a jump force. So jump force is equal to, I don't know, 700, for example. But a shortcut for this, and let me just comment this out, is that we can say comma here or write comma. And here we can say jump force is equal to 700. And this is the same as if we have declared jump force as a separate float variable here. This way we are simply declaring it in one line. So here we have a float that's move force, which is equal to five. We have jump force, which is also a float and it's equal to 700. So instead of writing many lines of code, we can simply declare them in this single line of code. And we are also going to have a max velocity, which is going to be equal to, I don't know, seven, for example. And we also need a private rigid body 2d which i'm going to call my body and we need a private animator which i'm going to call anim and in the awake function we are going to get a reference to both of them so here in the awake function instead of the start function i'm going to type my body is equal to get component passing the rigid body to as the component that we want to get and anim is equal to get component passing the animator so animator component that we want to get from our game object. Now we need to create a function that's going to allow us to move our player. So here I'm going to create a public void player move. So player move keyboard. And here what we are going to do is first we are going to create a variable which I'm going to call force x is equal to zero. And Next, we also need to create a variable which is going to be force y, but later, first we are going to program the movement for our, for our player, and after that, the jump, the jump, excuse me, for our player. And I also need to create a variable, or we can name it float. And when we say var like this, this is going to be a variable, but it will automatically detect which variable it is. So we put here 0f. And C sharp or the compiler for C sharp is automatically going to know that this is a float variable. So it's going to, well, create a float variable, even though we simply typed here var. We can also type here float and it's going to be the same. So for simplicity, I'm going to name it float. And here I'm going to name float velocity and it's going to be equal to math f. So this is a math f function from Unity Engine and I'm going to use abs. So this is the absolute value. What we put here in these parentheses is going to return us the absolute value. And we know from math classes that absolute value is always positive. So if I put here negative two, this is going to return two, because as I said, an absolute value is always positive. So I'm going to take my body velocity X, and this is going to give us the velocity on the horizontal or the X axis. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create float H and it's going to be equal to input get axis raw and I'm going to type here as a string horizontal so horizon 
fractal like this. And this is going to give me a number that's going to be either negative 1, 0, or 1. If we tap or press the left arrow key or the A key on the keyboard, this number here is going to, or this function is going to return negative 1. So h is going to be negative 1, and we are going to know that way that we are moving in the left direction. If we are not touching any key, it's going to return 0, then we are going to know that we are not moving. And if we touch the right arrow key or the D key on the keyboard, it's going to return 1, and that way we are going to know that we are moving in the right direction. So here we can simply say, if h is greater than 0, we are moving in the right direction. In order to control the velocity or the speed of our player, we are going to use this maximum velocity. So we are going to test if our current velocity, so if our velocity is less than the maximum velocity, then our force x is going to be equal to our move force. So as long as our velocity is less than the maximum velocity, set the force x to be equal to force in order to move the player. Here I'm going to say else if h is less than 0, we are moving in the left side. And we are going to perform this same check. So if our current velocity is less than the maximum velocity, set force x to be equal to, but now it's going to be negative move force because we are going to move in the left side and we need to apply, well, the negative force. Here I'm going to say else, meaning that we are not moving, and here we are going to set our player's animation back to idle. But now, at the end here, we need to say my body add force, and here it takes a vector 2 as a parameter, and here I'm going to pass our force x for the x-axis and force y for the y-axis. And we can actually test this out. And here in the fixed update function, and the difference between the update and the fixed update is update function is called each time, so it's called every frame per second. So if we have 60 frames per second, it's going to be called 60 times. And fixed update is called every couple of frames. So let's say fixed update is called every third frame or every fourth frame. And here we are going to pass our, or we are going to call our player move keyboard. And if I go back now, and if I run the game, I can simply move the player, but we see that the player has fall down. So what's the problem? Well, we need to select the player and go here in our rigid body. And for the constraints, we need to freeze the Z rotation or otherwise our player is going to fall as we just saw. And I need to hit apply. And now if I run the game, we are going to see our player is moving, but he is moving a little bit slowly. So I can go here and I can say the move force, let's say eight and maximum velocity 10. So now we see that the player is moving a little bit faster. So let's say the move force is 20. And now we see the player is moving really fast. So we can go back here, I'm going to set the move force to 10, I'm going to set the max velocity, I don't know, to 22. So now we are good to go. And if I run the game again, we see the player is moving, but he's only facing the right direction and he is not animating. So what we can do here is we can go back here and here we can say anim, so anim set bool walk true. And what we are doing here is if we go back here and select the player and go in his animator, here we have our walk parameter and we have these transitions. So here we set the conditions when walk is true, we are going to go from idle to walk animation. And for this condition, we set when walk is equal to false, we are going to go from walk back to idle. So this is what we are doing here. We're simply setting the walk to be equal to true to go into walk animation. And when it's equal to false, we are going to go back to our idle animation. So here in the else statement, if we are not moving left or right, we need to set our walk parameter back to false or we are not going to, so that we can play the idle animation or otherwise our move animation is going to stay. And I'm going to demonstrate this by commenting this line of code out. And if I go now here, 
Notice now if I move the player, he is going to animate the walk. So we see him animating his walk. But I'm not moving the player and we see that he is, well, walking. For that, we need to go back here and if I uncomment this right here, now if I run the game, we are going to see our player walking and if I don't move him, we see that he is stopping. And now we need to face him in the direct in the direction where we are walking. For that, I'm going to create a vector tree, which I'm going to name temp is equal to transform that local scale. And let me explain what I'm going to do here. If I go here and select the player, we see in this transform, we have the scale property. Notice if I take the X axis, now it's set to one. If I set it to negative one, notice the player. So notice him now. If I set it to negative one, he is facing the other direction. If I set it back to one, he is facing the right direction. So we are going to do that in our code. If I go back here, and now we are moving in the right side. So here I'm going to set temp x is equal to 1f, and I need to reset it or reset our transform local scale is equal to temp again in order to reset it. And I need to do the same thing here, but here our temp x is going to be equal to negative one, and he's going to face the left direction. If I run the game now, we are going to see our player animating and changing direction. So we see him animating, moving left and right and changing directions. Now we need to program our player walk or excuse me, our player jump. For that, we are going to go here and here I'm going to test if we touch or if we press space. So if input that get key, and we are going to say key code space. If we touch space, then what we're going to do is we're going to say our force y is equal to our jump force. So jump force. And now each time we press space, our player is going to jump. So we see and he jumps like crazy. In order to control his jump, we can set the gravity scale here at two and hit apply and notice anything that we do for this player, we are also going to do for the second player. So we're going to set his gravity scale at two. Here we are going to set the move force at 10, jump force 700, max velocity 22, so on and so forth. Everything that we are doing for this player, remember this, we are also going to do for our second player that's in our prefabs folder. So if I run the game now, and if I try to jump again, our player is jumping very high. So what I can do is I can say the jump force here at 500 and hit apply. So now if I run the game again, our player is jumping really high. So let's say jump force is 200 and I press apply. So now if I jump again, our player is jumping really high. So set the force at 100. So jump force 100, hit apply. And now our player is jumping like crazy again. But notice now, this is each time if I press or if I hold the space key, our player is jumping and going up. And we need to control this. So how can we control it? Well, we can go here and we can create a private Boolean. So private Boolean ground dead. This is going to tell us if we are on the ground or not. And here we can test if we are on the ground. So if we are grounded, then we can jump. But before we do that, we are first going to set grounded is equal to false so that we cannot jump the next time we press space. So if I go back here and now if I try to jump, we are going to see our player jumping. Well, or we are not going to see him, see him jumping because our grounded is set to false. So in order to set him to be equal to true, we need to go here and create void on collision enter 2d function which is going to take collision 2d as a parameter i'm going to name it target this is the function that's called when we have two colliders touching each other so we have the box collider attached attached on the player and we also have a box collider attached on our ground when these two touch each other this function on collision enter is going to be called and we use this on collision enter if we don't set these colliders to be triggers. 
So we see that the player's collider is not set to be triggered. So this box here is not checked. So he is not a trigger. And also for our ground here is not also a trigger. And that's why we need to use on collision enter. If they are set, if any of these two colliders is set to be a trigger, then we could use on trigger enter 2D. So on trigger enter 2D. And why we are using on collision enter and why we are not checking this on trigger enter, or excuse me, if why we are not checking is is trigger. Well, if I run the game now, we see that our player is sitting on this ground. He, has, he is not falling through the ground. If I set this or check this is trigger, our player is going to fall through the ground. We saw our player falling down and we don't want that. We want a solid body. And that's why we are not going to check this is trigger. And here we are using on collision enter. And here we can set or check if our target dot game object dot tag is equal to ground, meaning if we are practically touching the game object that has a tag ground, then we are going to say our grounded is equal to true. So our grounded variable is now equal to true. And we know that we have tagged our grounds with the ground here, or we did not tag them. So we need to select all of them and go here and create a ground tag. So ground tag, and we need to tag them with the ground tag or otherwise this is not going to work. So tag them with this tag. Now, if I run the game, when we touch them, we are going to, well, have this grounded variable set to true. And now I can jump, but we see that we are jumping with a really small force. And let me just now pump up the force. So let's say 700 again, and I can hit apply. So notice now if I run the game, if I press it, now we see our player jumping and we cannot jump anymore. And I'm touching and you hear that I'm touching the space space bar and our player is not jumping anymore until he touches the ground again. And now what I want to do, notice now how the player lands on the ground. He simply lands like a rocket and he simply stops. I want to make him bounce a little bit when he reaches the ground. For that, I'm going to go here and create a new folder. I'm going to name it materials. And here I'm going to right click create a physics 2D material. And I'm going to name this one bouncy. And we see here that we have friction and bounciness. I'm going to set the bounciness at 0.1 and I'm going, not going to touch the friction. And I need to select the player and apply this material on his box collider right here. And hit apply so that this change applies to his prefab. So now when I run the game, we see our player moving even smoother, which means that we need to pump up the move force a little bit. So let's say, I don't know, 15. We see our player moving now a little bit better. And if we jump now, so let me just put the move force again at, I don't know, 12. And we see here that our player is moving a little bit better. And let me see what I did wrong here. I'm testing if our maximum velocity, if it's less, if our velocity is less than the maximum velocity. So this is okay. So if velocity is less than the maximum velocity, I'm doing something wrong here. Let me just go back in our Unity editor and select our player, set the move force at 22 and max velocity at six. And I'm going to set the jump force at 600 and hit apply. And let me check now how our player is moving. So now we have the perfect movement and the jump for our player. And now I see everything is okay. So I did not make any mistake in our code. And notice now if I jump, look at the player when he bounces a little bit off the ground. So this is what we did with our bouncing. We are going to set our bouncy here at 0.2. And now we have the perfect movement for our player. Remember, as I said, we are going to do everything for this player. We are also going to do it for this player. So let me just bring him here and freeze his Z rotation, apply our material bouncy on him. So select the bouncy, apply it on his box collider 2D, attach the player script on him, set the move force at 22, max velocity at six and jump force at 600 and simply hit apply. So if I turn off this player, let me check now for this player. So yeah, everything is working or not. So what we did wrong, 
for this player why is he moving like this let me just see what's wrong with this oh we need to set the gravity scale on him so gravity scale is 2 and hit apply so that was the problem so select the gravity scale and now we have everything is working perfectly 600 for the bounciness move force let me select this player one and see all the changes that we made here so 22 6 600 2 and did we apply bouncy on him yeah we did apply so 22 6 600 everything is okay so everything is fine let me select the player one turn him off again and here is our player two so now everything is okay so here we have him seems that we can jump a little bit more when we touch the ground immediately and jump immediately again from the ground but that's that's not a problem when we have our monsters we are not going to be able to do that because they are going to swarm on us on each second and we are not going to notice that and we see the player's animation and walk and idle and all the good stuff this video is already getting out of control it's more than 20 minutes i think so i'm going to stop here this was for our player's movement the next thing that we are going to do and make sure that you hit apply to all of the changes that we made to our player to remove him here from the scene the next thing that we are going to do is we have noticed here that our player goes out of bounds for our camera so we are going to program our camera's movement to so that the camera will follow our player and as i said we are going to stop here and continue in the next video if you like what you see please comment like share subscribe please share it with your friends who want to learn game development i'm going to give you awesome tips i'm going to give you cool tips and we are also creating awesome games that you can play actually so you can go and i don't know brag to your grandma or, or, or your girlfriend that you made a game lie to her that you created it and let both of you play that game and enjoy it anyway like share comment rate and don't forget to subscribe I have these problems with my voice. I don't know what to say. And I will see you in the next video.